Hey everybody, how's it going? I hope you're having a lovely morning. Today I would like to go over a YouTube channel that I find to be exceptional in the work that she does. She's covering an issue that I've been talking about for over 10 years, which are fake reviews. Her channel is called Fake Review Watch, and she actually managed to get somebody in trouble with the Attorney General whose Manhattan medical office was using fake reviews. And it looked like that person got a $100,000 fine for manipulating the reviews of their online practice. This is something I've been talking about for a long time before I really was posting a lot of videos to YouTube back when I thought people would actually read the stuff that I wrote. Uh, this is a page on our site. Our Yelp feedback hasn't been bought and paid for. And self-masturbation, the art of reviewing yourself, bribing customers, and paying people to like you, which I thought was very lame. I've talked about this for a long time. There's a right way and there's a wrong way to generate reviews for your local business, and I find this to be a crappy one. This ties back to the topic I discussed in the last video that I did on YouTube and ad blockers, where people seem to be growing tired of the fact that the internet is essentially one big ad and it's not even an honest ad it's a dishonest ad everybody is looking to try and monetize the internet as much as humanly possible regardless of whether there's actual honesty and authenticity in it 20 years ago it wasn't like this but nowadays it really just seems to be the way things are and she did an excellent piece here she's covered other businesses in the past that I've talked about on this channel I've talked about this with a company called drive savers that is known on a regular basis for charging customers three thousand dollars for a screen repair. I'm not kidding. If you send them an iPhone where the only issue with that iPhone is that it has a bad screen, they don't call you up and say, hey, your iPhone only has a bad screen. You can use a screen replacement and you're done. They will recover th recover the data from the phone and bill you $3,000 for it without telling you that the only problem with your phone all along was a bad screen. And I've often wondered, how is it that a company that has this practice is regularly trusted as much as they are? And one of the reasons for this that I go over on my own website is that they have a lot of five-star reviews that were posted for in questionable ways. She actually found a lot of reviews that were on Drive Savers' page were actually reviews from other people for other businesses that magically tended to wind up on their page. I wonder how that happened. It's almost like having a bunch of fake five-star reviews call me crazy. It's almost like having a bunch of fake five-star reviews just so happens to correlate with people trusting you enough to pay $3,000 for a screen repair. But I digress. She actually put a lot of work and effort into this, and she managed to find people over two years ago in the video that she did on this issue, online marketer faking reviews for New York Surgeon, where you had somebody here who's a member of review exchange groups on Google and Facebook, and she managed to track it down to this person's practice and managed to show this nice little line of evidence demonstrating that the reviews that were being posted to this person's page were reviews that were not 100% genuine. And I I think it's really cool. In spite of my disagreements with the New York Attorney General or New York government on a number of different issues, I'm very happy to see that they're finally starting to hold people accountable for this because many people, myself included, will make decisions on what we buy, what products we use, what services we utilize, and the business we patronize based on online reviews. And if we cannot trust the online reviews, then this really undermines the entire system. And one of the things where I think the pendulum has swung way too far in the direction of the wild, wild west over the past few few years is that nobody gets in trouble for very blatant, obvious fake reviews. I'm not talking about you read the reviews of the business and those reviews kind of seem fishy. I'm talking about a situation where I literally pay somebody to get me fake five-star reviews. I paid for it. You can see in my bank statements or on my credit card statements that I paid somebody whose sole advertised service is I am going to get you fake five-star reviews. This is, should be considered false advertising and this should be something that people are actually fined for. If you're in the business of inventing, creating, or pulling out of your ass fake reviews for businesses, in my opinion, what you are doing is false and misleading advertising. That is a crime, and you should be punished for it. And I'm happy that the Attorney General in New York decided to hold people accountable. But more important, I'm happy that channels like Fake Review Watch exist that actually look into this. She has 2,000 subscribers, and at the time that she made that video, she had less than $500. She's not making a lot of money out of this. She's doing it as a passion project because it's something that she finds cool. And this is what the internet needs. It needs more people that are willing to look into the scammers and spammers that make the internet worse. As I talked about in that video that I did on YouTube and Adblock, we currently patronize an internet whose primary purpose is to separate us from our money. And whether that is by honest means or dishonest means, a lot of people just don't care anymore. But there are people out there that do care and they're doing good work to ensure that the reviews that you read are honest and I appreciate their work. I strongly believe that we would not live in a world where a company
company can charge literally $3,000 for an iPhone screen repair if we lived in a world where the reviews that we read were reviews that we knew to be honest. This is something that is going to cost consumers money, and it is a practice that I find to be particularly underhanded and disgusting, and I'm glad that people are finally starting to be held to task and held to account for it. As it says here, many patients rely on online reviews when choosing what doctor to trust with their health, and it's important that these are authentic. Dr. Mormon deceived patients through a secret campaign to remove negative reviews and unfairly obtain positive reviews to boost his practice. These actions are illegal and unacceptable, particularly for critical services like medical care. My office will continue to take action against those trying to mislead patients in New York. Dr. Mormon and his wife used several techniques to prevent prospective patients from seeing negative reviews posted by dissatisfied patients. On some platforms, they would falsely flag negative reviews for removal for violating the platform's policies prohibiting inappropriate conduct. In other cases, Dr. Mormon would have his office contact patients who left negative reviews and offer to refund their copay or other costs in exchange for removing the bad review. To prevent some patients from even having the opportunity to leave a negative review uh, on the popular medical booking site ZocDoc, Dr. Mormon would falsely indicate that the patients had not shown up for a scheduled appointment so that ZocDoc would not be able to solicit those patients for reviews. As a result of these efforts, common complaints about Dr. Mormon, such as failing to listen to patient complaints, surprise charges, poor bedside manner, and poor communication, were hidden from prospective patients. In addition to suppressing negative reviews online, Dr. Mormon and his wife worked together to illegally obtain fake positive reviews. They asked friends and family and employees to leave positive five-star reviews, regardless of whether they had actually been seen or received treatment. Ms. Mormon also hired contractors on sites such as Fiverr and Upwork.com to post fake reviews. Ms. Mormon either wrote the text for such reviews herself or copied the text of positive reviews posted for other orthopedic specialists and provided them to the contractors. The contractors would then utilize networks of fraudulent accounts to post the reviews into the guise of one of Mormon's patients. And they actually thanked KD and a fake review watch for assisting with the investigation. And I genuinely believe that what is happening here, I genuinely believe that this should not simply be seen as something that is underhanded and scummy, but that it should be seen as a crime. I am not allowed to falsely advertise my products and services. False advertising is a crime. And in my opinion, paying people to leave reviews that are fake, that were never your customers, actually paying for the service of I am going to have fake reviews left for your business should be a crime. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.